Welcome. We're so excited to have everybody here today. Today's program is part of the Presidential Primary Sources Project, and our program today is the Seventh Street Challenge Lincoln's Commute, and it's being presented by President Lincoln's Cottage. The Presidential Primary Sources Project is a collaboration um, between Internet2, the National Archives, and the National Park Service. It's a series we put on every year from January to the beginning of April. Um, and it's every Tuesday and Thursday. This is just a quick reminder by participating today, you are agreeing to be recorded, streamed and archived. We do keep recordings of all of our programs on our YouTube channel for teachers and students to access later. All right, we absolutely want you to participate today. Um, if you would like to be on video and you're not, you can go ahead and um, put a message in the chat and I can promote you so we can see our video. Um, if you'd like to use your voice, but not your video, you can use the little raise hand icon in Zoom and we can help you unmute. And then of course there's the chat box. So if you haven't already found the chat box, it looks like a little caption bubble, go ahead and click on that. Um, we will use that a lot throughout the presentation. Uh, please participate as much as possible. It's a lot more fun if we get to hear your thoughts and questions. That said, please be really respectful of our chat box and our interactive tools and try to keep any questions or thoughts directly related to what our speaker is talking about. All right, and with that, I just wanna thank everyone again for joining us. This is our website. If you wanna check out um, our upcoming programs or find access to our recordings, you can do all of that there. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and pass it over to Joan from Lincoln's Cottage. Hi everybody, um, good, it's morning where I am, so I'm gonna say good morning. Uh, I, maybe you guys are in a different time zone, but I'm really excited to be talking with you today and to share some information about us at President Lincoln's Cottage and about Lincoln's commute from the cottage to the White House. Um, I'd love to hear first though from you all. Again, you can drop in the chat or use one of those other methods Therese identified. What are some things y'all already know about Abraham Lincoln? You can let me know what something you already know about him. We can use that as a starting point. Okay. Yeah, Lakewood is saying that he worked on ending slavery, which is absolutely true. And we talk about that a lot here at President Lincoln's Cottage because Lincoln was living here at the cottage itself when he came up with the Emancipation Proclamation, which is of course his big idea for working on ending slavery. So that's a great job, Lakewood. That's a really important part of Lincoln's legacy and an important part of the work that he was doing while he was here at the cottage. Anything else we already know about him? I'm gonna give everybody a second to type and then we'll talk it over. Yeah, he wore a big tall hat. Uh, it's a usually called a top hat or a stovepipe hat, but Lincoln was already our tallest president at 6'4", and then also wore a big tall stovepipe hat on top of that. We like to talk about that here because sometimes he would take his hat off and he would put papers down inside it to keep track of his ideas. And we talk about ourselves here at the cottage as a home for brave ideas, as a place that helped Lincoln work on these big powerful ideas like what to do about slavery. I think that's related to this other thought that's coming in from Lakewood as well about Lincoln being assassinated. He was killed in a theater uh, by a person who was angry about the work that Lincoln had been doing to end slavery and about who was angry about the work uh, Lincoln was suggesting. Lincoln was offering that maybe black soldiers who had fought in the Civil War should be offered the right to vote. And that made the assassin angry enough to tip his plan over into violence and kill the president. So this question of slavery and what the future of the country looked like was directly related to why Lincoln was killed. These are all some great thoughts to be starting from. What we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be walking you guys through the route that Lincoln took when he went home to the cottage from the White House. So y'all probably know already that the president normally lives in the White House. Normally, the president also works in the White House, but in Lincoln's case, for three summers of his presidency, he was living here at the cottage and still working at the White House. 
So he had to get to work in the morning and then get home from work at the end of the day, just like you all uh, may or go to places at the beginning of the day. Maybe you go to school or another place regularly, sports practice, et cetera. Lincoln was commuting back and forth from the cottage to the White House. I'm gonna take you through that journey today. We're gonna to encounter some of the things he encountered along the way. And I'm also gonna have challenges for you all. So when we hit something that's related to something Lincoln saw, I'm gonna ask you to tell me about something from the place that you are at that's related. Like for example, if I asked you to find something around you that is red right now, do you think you could do it? Right, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. I will have a challenge for you and I will be excited to hear about what you find that meets these criteria and matches up with these challenges um, to help us understand a little better Lincoln's journey to and from the White House. So let's get started. We'll say it's the end of the day. Lincoln has done a long day of work at the White House and that's where he would be starting from for his commute home. The star shape, the yellow star shape, marks the location of the White House in Civil War Washington. That's still there, it's still in the same place today. And the little house shape up here at the top marks the location of the cottage. Lincoln and his family lived here for three summers because they were looking for an escape from the heat and pressure of downtown. They were looking to get away from the White House also because their young, one of their young sons, Willie, had died in the White House earlier that year, probably of typhoid fever, though we're not entirely sure. So you can see there's quite a distance between the two places the Lincolns were living. So Lincoln would end his day at the White House and he would be going home to the cottage. It's about three miles and it took him about a half an hour. So the other thing I wanna point out on this map that's really noticeable is you can see there's a grid towards the bottom of the map of all the streets of Washington, DC. And then up towards the top of the map, everything gets a little squigglier, right? You can see the speckles of farms and country estates and uh, a little bit messier as it were. Washington DC was a much smaller city during the Civil War than it is today. Today, you would be looking at all a grid of streets if we were looking at this same section of the city on the map. So Lincoln would be starting at the White House and here's kind of what he would be encountering. The, these are two pictures of the White House during the Civil War. As I said, it's still there today. It looks more or less the same. It's a little bit bigger today than it is in these pictures. But one thing I really notice is a big difference between today and then is you could just walk right up to the White House. There's no fence around it. You can see in this small picture on the left, there's people walking around in the front yard. While Lincoln was the president, the president was meant to be accessible. So anybody who had a question for Lincoln or wanted a job in the government could go to the White House and line up and ask him for that. And you can decide how that would make you feel if uh, you were living and working there, um, but it was one. It was something that the um, Lincoln found at times exciting and at times a little bit stressful and overwhelming, right? I think you're right, Lakewood. There's also um, a sort of a difference in the landscaping around the White House. Uh, between then and now as well. So the White House was busy, downtown was busy. There were people moving into the city from all over the country to help with things that were related to the war. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. Um, but the other thing was the city wasn't as developed as it is today. This picture is of the National Mall in Washington, DC. So today you would be seeing a big green expanse of lawn. You would be seeing all the Smithsonian museums. It would be a big tall Washington monument in the background. And it does, yeah, look kind of empty in relationship to what we would see today. You can also see the streets are not paved. And the really big difference is there's a big um, uh, canal, a body of water. It's like a silvery stripe over on the right-hand side of the image that then goes straight through the middle across to the left. That canal was constructed in downtown Washington, DC, but they didn't actually finish it, which meant that the water wasn't moving. And I know you all have encountered this in your lives. If you leave water outside, like in a puddle or a stream or something, and it doesn't move and it just sits there, 
it gets grosser and grosser and grosser, right? This canal would have gone right in front of the White House. The White House is just off the picture on the right-hand side. And so this very unpleasant water experience was right there downtown for the Lincolns as well. This picture was taken um, essentially from the top of the Capitol building, looking west across the mall, if you're trying to orient yourself. The other thing, uh, the other building you may recognize in this picture is the castle-shaped building at the top right. That building is the Smithsonian Castle, and again, is still there today, though now it's surrounded by a lot more museums. Um, Lakewood, is your question about why they didn't finish the canal? Yeah, um, basically they ran out of money and didn't, <laughs> didn't get it finished uh, in time for it to be useful. And then after they had uh, gotten through the war and all that kind of stuff, they decided actually we don't need this after all, it's not as useful as we wanted it to be. And they covered it over and today it's under Constitution Avenue. Um, so it really gives me a, a, a sense of DC as a city that was still in progress during the Civil War, right? The country was not very old at this point. The DC had been the capital for even less time. And so it was all still, people were still figuring out what it would look like and how it would work. You can really get a sense of that muck kind of in this picture too. This picture is of the Capitol building. As you can see in the corner, it's from September of 1860, which is right close there to the beginning of the war. You can see the remnants of the canal and you can also see that none of the streets were paved. So that meant anytime it got wet in any way, everything was covered in mud. Um, you can really get a sense of the, it's kind of messy downtown, right? I think things were messy in a big picture way as well, because Lincoln encountered, when he arrived in Washington, D.C., he encountered this big, messy, complicated problem of what do we do about slavery? He had become, been elected president, and then a civil war had broken out over this issue of slavery, over what the future of the country would look like. And so Lincoln was thinking through this big, thorny problem, and he had this kind of mucky environment around him. I don't know if anybody has been to Washington DC during the summer, but we have incredibly humid and sticky summers, even now that we are not living with a stagnant canal downtown. So we're actually coming up on our first challenge that I have for you all. I want you to look around the environment that you're in and inspired by Lincoln's environment, I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds to discover and bring back to me something that is wet. Ready? Go. Again, I want you to find something that is wet, inspired by Lincoln's big, messy environment that he was living in and experiencing in downtown Washington, DC. And once you've found it, if you're back already, you still have 10 seconds, but if you're back already, please drop into the chat a description of what you found. So I can get a sense of what you guys discovered. Alrighty, we're out of time. Drop into the chat. I see that Lakewood has found some stuff. Has anybody else found anything for their challenge here today? You can put in as many answers as you want if you found more than one thing. Great, I see some folks have actual water with them. That's very smart, good choices. Lakewood says your boots are wet. Is it raining there? It's raining here today in Washington DC as well. Um, so I have like a whole wet environment right out there outside that I could bring to this challenge. Great, okay, good job everybody. You did it, that was our first challenge for today. We're gonna keep rolling with Lincoln trying to get home here to the cottage. Um, so he would leave the White House and he would ride north through the city on horseback. To be clear, this commute is not happening in a car or a bus or a bicycle. It would be on horseback. He would be riding north through the city and he would pass by Walt Whitman's house. So Walt Whitman is over there on the right-hand side with the kind of Santa Claus style beard. He was a famous poet who had moved to Washington DC during the war. 
And he moved to DC during the war because he was looking for his brother. His brother had gone and joined the army and then he had been hurt and Walt hadn't heard from him at all. And so he came to DC to volunteer in the hospitals because he wanted to help out, but also because he was looking for his brother. He wanted to see what had happened to him. And Whitman saw Lincoln riding back and forth and wrote some very beautiful things about how Lincoln's face changed over the course of the war. And then after Lincoln was killed, Whitman wrote some poems that became even more famous about Lincoln's assassination. If you've heard of poems like, Oh Captain, My Captain, or When Lilacs Last in the Dooryard Bloomed, those are both about Lincoln's death. But before Lincoln died, during the Civil War, Whitman, like I said, was volunteering in the hospitals in the city. The picture on the left-hand side here is the picture of the inside of a Civil War hospital. Just like we were looking at the White House before, you can start to notice some differences between hospitals today and hospitals then. One big one that I notice is the mosquito nets that are above the beds of all of the soldiers who are in the hospital. And that's to try and protect them both from just, it's not very fun to get bitten by mosquitoes, but also mosquitoes carried a lot of diseases and they were trying to protect the soldiers from those diseases while they were in the hospital getting better. This is a, a drawing of a hospital that was very close to us here at the cottage called Harewood Hospital. Uh, if any of you have ever gone to school in a school that um, had trailers in addition to regular classrooms, you kind of understand what this is like because all these buildings towards the bottom with the black roofs, those are the permanent buildings of the hospital. And then the buildings over on the right hand side with the white roofs, those are temporary buildings that were constructed because they ran out of space because there were so many people coming to be in this hospital. Mrs. Lincoln was also uh, volunteering to help the soldiers in the hospital. She would go there and she would bring them fruit and she would write letters home for the soldiers who couldn't do it for themselves. That's her over there on the left-hand side in the flowery dress. And she and her um, uh, wrote those letters to say like, we, you know, we know where your son is, he's okay. Um, all that kind of stuff. And I think she really would have understood why that was important because her son had died as well. So she knew what it was like to wanna to know where your kid was and to wanna make sure that they were okay. Like what I think this is a great point that um, when COVID started, there were a lot of temporary buildings erected for hospitals all over the country to try and deal with this surge in demand. Something similar was happening during the civil war with all the people who were being wounded and um, ill because of the conditions of the war. On the right hand side is a picture of an ambulance during the Civil War. These I've included because that's how Lincoln encountered the wounded soldiers. He would be riding home to the cottage or to work at the White House and he would pass on the road the ambulances filled with soldiers who were, had been wounded in the battle and were on their way to the hospital. And Lincoln would stop and talk with these soldiers to find out what was going on in their life, what had just happened to them on the battlefield. He could get a lot of updates from them and he could understand their point of view. It definitely looks different than ambulances today. Uh, it looks less comfortable to me. It looks like there maybe isn't a siren involved, but, and that, that might seem kind of like, like not as good, right? But at the same time, these ambulances were helping a lot of people. So inspired by them and by Mrs. Lincoln and Whitman and all the other people who were volunteering in these hospitals during the war, your next challenge here is to bring me something that you could use to help someone else. Again, I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds. Let's start now. And you can think of something that you could use to help someone else with uh, you know, an injury or an illness in the same way that these folks were, or you can think a little bigger about what it means to help somebody else and what you might be able to use from the environment around you to be able to do that. You do still have about 10 seconds left, but if you've got something already, please feel free to drop it in the chat. and I'd love to hear about it. All right, that is time there. Um, I think Team Irby, hugs is a great example. That's something in your environment that you always have with you, right? 
is your body to help people out, to talk with them. Um, we have some phones and water and coats and all these other great supplies in the environment around you to help people out. And I think that's a great uh, thing to practice thinking about because um, helping people out is really important and you want to know how in the, in the environment around you, you can be able to support them. So let's keep rolling. Lincoln would be passing Walt Whitman's house. He would be continuing to move north through the city and he would encounter on the edge of the developed part of the city, a contraband camp. You can see that this blue dot there is right on the edge between the squiggly part of the map and the grid part of the map. And this is because contraband is a complicated word that applies to people who were escaping slavery. So they would escape slavery and they would come here to Washington DC, um, but they didn't already have houses in the city, right? So they would set themselves up on the outskirts of the city wherever they could um, to build a better life for themselves and their families now that they had escaped slavery. The word contraband is a little complicated though because normally contraband refers to stuff, to things, to objects, and these are all people. So they were people who had escaped from slavery themselves and were camped on the outskirts of the city. I've also heard some historians talk about them as refugees, but really the language around this is really complicated. These are a couple of pictures of contraband camps in and around Washington, DC. The one on the left is actually in DC, but the one on the right is a contraband camp in Virginia. I've included it because of this story that we know about, about Lincoln encountering contrabands uh, people escaping slavery in these camps outside the city is that he stopped and sang with them. They were having a, a service, they were singing hymns, and he stopped and sang a couple songs with them. So this picture on the right gives me a sense of that because the people in this picture are doing the same thing. They're, they're ho holding a service. Um, this is another picture from a camp in Virginia that might give you a sense of the conditions of the camps. It's you know, it was not an ideal living situation. And yet people felt like it would be worth it if they could get here and they could get free. And they were using Washington DC as their destination because slavery ended here in the city before it ended in Maryland and Virginia, which surround us. So people were escaping from Maryland, from Virginia, from other places. And they knew if they could get here to DC, they could stay free. Um, and so that was a, a huge phenomenon that was happening during the war. And another reason the population of the city was rising and rising during the war. So um, your challenge, inspired by these contrabands and the singing and their sort of saying with their feet that they would rather be free than enslaved, um, is to bring me something oops, that makes noise. So again, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds, something that makes noise. It can be a pleasant noise. It can be an unpleasant noise. It's up to you. Something that you can use to make noise. Okay, you have about six more seconds. I do see some answers coming in already. And three, two, one. Awesome. Okay, so uh, Team Irby, you have put the word chicken in the chat, which is incredible, but I need to know more. Is this a living chicken? Is it a rubber chicken? Is it, tell me more about this so we can all get a better sense of what kind of noise it might be making. Um, Chairs on the ground is a great answer also, Lakewood. And is this a, a, a sort of a shaking pencil box, like a, like a rattle or a maraca kind of? Yeah, great. Okay, okay, not a living chicken, a, a toy chicken. Yeah, yeah, uh, great work, everybody. It sounds like if we played all of these noises all together at the same time, we would have quite a symphony happening. I think that would be really enjoyable. So thank you for bringing that to my morning today. Let's keep rolling though, as we keep following Lincoln on his commute home to the cottage 
If he rides all the way up to the top of the hill, he would at last arrive home at the cottage itself. You can see it's all that three miles distance from the White House. And it looks like this in the 1860s. This is a picture that we have from Mrs. Lincoln's family photo album of the cottage itself. Um, and we did a, a bunch of work to make it look just like that today. So we're still here. The house is the same house as the Lincolns lived in. It's possible to come and visit if you would like. You can check out our website for all that information about tours and everything, and you can come be in the space that Lincoln was in. But while we're learning about it today, uh, you can see all along the south side of the house, which is what these pictures are showing you, there's these huge windows. And that was really helping the Lincolns with their experience of Washington, D.C. during that sticky, icky summer, because they could open the windows all along this side of the house and have the breeze come straight through and make a better experience. They were all living in a time before air conditioning, so they didn't have that option to make the summer more comfortable. You can also see both here and on the map that the cottage was not all up in the middle of the city. There were beautiful, um, sort of spacious out here. It's a little bit quieter. There would have been soldiers surrounding the Lincolns camped on the grounds uh, that you're looking at right now, mostly to guard the president and his family and make sure no Confederate soldiers were getting them. Um, but so it's kind of both quieter and also not quieter at the same time. You are right, Lakewood, this is a big house. It was built as a, a country house for a rich banker named George Riggs. And then Riggs sold the house to the government as they were starting a retirement home for veterans. And it's the retirement home for veterans that invited the Lincolns to come and stay. So the Lincolns never owned this house and they didn't have a say in how it was built either. Um, but you're right, it's a big house. It's very much a big house. While he was up here, like we were talking about before, Lincoln came up with his, his big idea that was working on ending slavery, which is called the Emancipation Proclamation. The picture that I'm showing you now is of his bedroom here at the cottage, and those windows would look south over the rest of the city. The desk here is our copy, but the original sat in this spot until the 1930s when the Hoovers had it moved to the White House. So we know that this was a space that Lincoln was working in as well as sort of living and sleeping in. Or really I should say not sleeping because he had famously had trouble sleeping during the Civil War, thinking about all of these things in the middle of the night. What do we do about slavery? How do we bring the war to a close? What can I do to make all of this worth it? You can see how that would keep somebody up at night, right? Lincoln put together the Emancipation Proclamation while he was living here. The proclamation helped free over 4 million Americans, but it didn't free everybody. It didn't apply to people who were still enslaved in the Union States. So if you are from Kentucky or Maryland or Delaware or Missouri, nobody in your state was freed by the proclamation. Only people in Confederate territory were freed by the proclamation. So that's like Virginia and Georgia and Florida and Texas, et cetera. So Lincoln had this idea for how do we work on ending slavery? And he had to make that idea a little bigger. That wasn't the end of solving the problem. And the next idea he came up with was the 13th Amendment, which changed the Constitution to say slavery is illegal everywhere in the United States. And that's still today the law that we use to prosecute uh, people who are enslaving others. So I want you to think for a moment about a place in your life, a place you go when you have something complicated to think about. And if you can tell me in the chat or however it works for you, why does that place work for you? Like for example, if I would say, I wanna go for a walk to think about something complicated, that really works for me because it means my body is busy and my brain can really get working on something. So think for a minute about where you like to go when you have something complicated to think about and why that place works for you. Yeah, Maybe some places that are outside, absolutely. Okay. 
think Lincoln also enjoyed sitting on the back porch of his house that we were looking at a moment ago, taking in some of that fresh air, maybe a little bit of a peace and quiet. I think a sense of comfort is important too, because um, we wanna feel like we can be ourselves kind of when we're thinking about something complicated. Yeah, there's, there's some answers about privacy coming into the chat as well. I think that's also, all of these things are things that Lincoln was looking for when he came out here to the cottage. And I'm really glad that he found them because they gave him the space and time to work on this idea of how do we end slavery. So your next challenge coming up, my friends, is I want you to bring me something that helps you focus. Ready? Go. Something in this space around you that helps you focus. And if you wanna tell me why that helps you focus, that would be great too. But you do still have 10 whole seconds to look. So if you need them, they're available for you. What's something that helps you focus or do your best thinking in the space that you're in? Ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay, so we have some great answers. We have somebody who says snacks help them focus. We have a poppet, which is um, like a toy for your hands, right? Um, we have someone who, whose mother helps them focus. If somebody around you can remind you to focus, that can be great sometimes. And music as well. Yeah, so these are all things that help you guys do your best thinking. And that's uh, really great to have around if you wanna be solving problems in your life or in the world. All right, let's keep rolling. Lincoln would be at home looking out those windows here on the facing in the south, facing to the south, and he would have a view of the Capitol building, a vista of the Capitol. I've circled the Capitol here on this map so you can get a sense of where it is in relationship to the cottage. Again, the Capitol is still here today, but it looked pretty different during the Civil War. We looked at this picture before because we were looking at the canal and the mud, but in the distance, you can see that the Capitol building was not finished being constructed during the Civil War. Once the war started, people were like, well, maybe we should stop working on this. It's expensive, it's a big project. We need money and people to do the war stuff instead. And Lincoln, it was important to Lincoln that, that the construction on the Capitol continue because he knew that the Capitol was a symbol of the government and it was a symbol of the country. That if people believed that the Capitol would continue, it would be easier for them to believe that the country was going to continue and that the country was going to make it through this big challenge that they were facing. That said, like we talked about before, the Capitol was not the only building in Washington DC that was unfinished during the Civil War. In this picture, I'm showing you another famous building in DC, how it looked during the Civil War. Can anybody take a quick guess as to which one? I've got a bunch of soldiers here in front of uh, what was completed of the Washington Monument. Yeah, great job, Lakewood. It's a, a picture of the Washington Monument during the Civil War. It was about a third of the way completed. And so the, the whole rest of it, the whole other two thirds were not completed until after the war. And the area around the monument was not used as the big spacious green mall it is today. It was instead used as the staging area for soldiers like these ones, for um, cows to feed the soldiers, for sort of ammo and equipment and animals and et cetera, and all that kind of stuff. The Capitol building though did continue to be worked on during the war. So just real quick, you can see the top of that building getting a little more complete here and then even closer to being finished by the end of the war. Again, Lincoln felt like it was important that people believe in the future of the country, right? So here's your final challenge for now. Um, inspired by all of these unfinished projects, including the Capitol and the Washington Monument, and maybe you could say the country, I would like you to bring me something that you can break into fractions. What's something that comes in a lot of pieces or something that's built out of other small pieces? 
So I don't want, for example, like a glass vase where you could break it into pieces, but you couldn't put it back together again, right? What's something that comes in small pieces or is made up of many smaller pieces? All right, I'm gonna give you same number of seconds. Here we go. I can tell people are already looking though, which is exciting. Awesome. Okay, you still have 10 seconds to look. Can you find anything else that fits into this category? Nice. Guys, these answers are so good. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. I love this answer of a graham cracker because like a graham cracker is a whole cracker, but it's also secretly four crackers. That's amazing. Um, Lakewood, it seems like you guys have some equipment in your classroom that comes in a bunch of pieces. I also really like this answer of atoms, right? I especially like that answer of atoms because when people first discovered atoms, they thought they were the smallest piece that there was. They thought that that was, that was as small as it was possibly going to go and you couldn't break it into any smaller pieces, but that turned out not to be true. It turned out that even atoms are made up of other stuff are made up of other small things that makes them possible. So we've gotten Lincoln home from work. He's had a chance to think about this big complicated problem. I would like to hear from you all. Like he was solving a big problem that he cared about in the world. He was trying to figure out what do we do about ending slavery? I would love to hear from you all. What is a big problem that you care about solving in the world? Who do you see in your community that needs help? You can drop your answer in the chat. You can take a minute to think about it if you'd like, but what's a big problem in the world that you care about solving? And who do you see around you that needs help? Mm -hmm. I know it's a big question, but I also know that you all are, uh, I can see that you all are compassionate and care about what's happening around you already. Um, we have some great answers coming through. We have ocean pollution, homelessness, the situation in Ukraine, uh, I see bullying and the environment in general, yeah. Hunger is a great answer. How do we make sure everybody has enough food? These are big, important problems. And uh, I could understand if you felt like it was a little overwhelming to try and solve this problem. Especially because like, I'm, you know, Lincoln was the president. I'm not the president. And as far as I know, none of you guys are either. Though I would be excited if you were. Um, and so you're like, well, what do I even do about this? So. I like to think of Lincoln as an example. If you can think about all of those things that you found for your challenges along the way, if you think about them in order, this is how it works. You can use Lincoln as an example when a big, messy, let's say wet problem shows up in your life or in your community. You can look around you and see what you can do to help other people. You can use your voice to make some noise about the problem. You can do whatever you need to do to get yourself focused. And then you can bring all the pieces of your community around you together to work on solving the problem. Because all of these big problems are important problems that we can do something to solve by ourselves, but we can do even more to solve if we are working together as a community. And so I'm really excited to see how you all tackle approaching these big complicated problems because I've already discovered through the course of our challenges today that you have great problem solving skills. And so I'm excited to see how you apply those problem solving skills to really important things like hunger and the environment because those are ongoing projects that we can all be working on to make a difference on. And we're always hopeful that other people who talk to us here at the cottage have the same chance that Lincoln had while he was here to think about a problem that matters to them and something that they can do about it and that we can make space for that kind of thinking because that's how we start to get stuff done, right? 
Um, and like I said, I'm just really excited to see what you guys have been able to do so far already. It's really exciting to think about. Um, I have a couple extra minutes. If you all have questions about Lincoln or about the cottage, I would be happy to answer them for you. Yeah, I see that Lakewood is curious about how many children Lincoln had. Lincoln had four boys. Their names were Robert, Eddie, Willie, and Tad. Before Lincoln became president, Eddie died. He was about two years old and he got sick and died. While Lincoln was president, Willie died. I mentioned him earlier as a part of the reason the Lincolns moved to the cottage was because Willie died in the White House and they wanted to go somewhere else after that happened. So while Lincoln was president, his son Robert and his son Tad were alive and living with him, though Robert went to college in the middle of that, so he wasn't home all the time. And then Lincoln was killed. And then later, Tad also died. So it's just Robert, the oldest Lincoln son, who survived to adulthood and sort of got the chance to grow up all the way. Um, unfortunately, the story kind of just gets sadder the more you learn about it. Um, but it's a great question. Um, I saw a question about when the cottage was built. This building was built in 1842, so it is um, almost 200 years old, which is very exciting. Uh, but the Lincolns didn't move in until 1862. So like I said, it was built for a banker before first, and then the banker sold the house to the government to start the retirement home, and the retirement home invited the Lincolns to come and stay here. Today, we are still on the grounds of the retirement home, and that means that when you come and visit us, which yes, Lakewood is definitely possible, um, you can, you will be a guest of the retirement home in the same way that Lincoln was, which is really exciting. Um, there are, are about 300 veterans who live on the property right now. And we share, they're our neighbors. We share this campus with them. Um, so that's really exciting. To my knowledge, there are not any living relatives of Abraham Lincoln any living um, descendants. It's a little bit tricky because um, he had a sibling and then Mrs. Lincoln had 14 siblings. So she's got a lot of relatives out there, but there are not any descendants that are alive. Yeah. All right. Well, if there are no other questions, I just I want to take a minute just to thank everybody for attending. We really appreciate your attendance and your participation. We had some great answers and thoughts in the chat today. Um, and then, Joan, we just want to thank you so much for this presentation and all your knowledge and your time. We really appreciate it. Thanks to everybody again. I enjoyed talking with you very much. And thanks.